Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Miley here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July the 4th, 2020. Happy July 4th. This is recorded around 421 p.m. Eastern Time. While well, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies last set that yesterday, July the 3rd, we continue to notice this area of cooler than normal anomalies for the most part across the equatorial Pacific. This is going to translate well to help the Atlantic Basin be more active. We've already seen that and we are going to be underway with our fifth name storm likely here by this evening. We'll likely have our fifth name storm. We'll talk about that here in a minute. This classical AMO phase one configuration to help warm the Atlantic main development region, this kind of horseshoe shape bending all the way back into the south, uh, the, the so southeastern United States coastline here. That is going to help to prevail and intensify this year's hurricane season. It will be quite active for sure, no doubts about that. Up ocean heat content values updated as of this morning. Again, we continue to notice this very expansive area of significant up ocean heat content areas out there in the Caribbean and southwestern Atlantic basins. Basically, once you start getting up into really the third of the scale, starting really about the, the yellowish and then continuing on, you know, into the, the darker reds, that's your higher that's your more significant upper ocean heat content values, your more latent heat release potential in the atmosphere, and more potential for something to come along and take significant advantage of that and strengthen. And again, you're seeing those highest values out here in the lesser Antilles, near the lesser Antilles into the Caribbean, and even near the Bahamas in the southwestern Atlantic Basin as well. Pretty significant. Basically, everywhere where I'm outlining at least has some decent upper ocean heat content values all the way into the Gulf Stream. And look now at the Gulf of Mexico, very warm and anomalously warm in some parts of the Gulf of Mexico. Almost entirely, the whole Gulf has once again filled in with above normal areas of sea surface temperatures. So very warm warm there and if you take a look at this is the actual sea surface temperatures coming off the CDAS methodology from tropicaltippets.com you notice that most of this area is very significantly running above the long-term average and very warm especially out here in the southwestern Atlantic basin out here to the Florida Peninsula right up against the, the shelf waters there 31 to 32 Celsius roughly equivalenting to about 93 to 94 Fahrenheit these water temperatures even in Nassau and the Bahamas very extensively warm out here even into the Gulf of Mexico 28 to, to uh, about 28 to 30 Celsius even some 31 and this isn't necessarily shelf water through here that's not shelf water that's actually actual you know deeper water so that has the potential for something to come along and take advantage of that if something does come along it has the potential to work with very significant water temperatures and we even talked about this in the very beginning that these water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico and southwestern Atlantic are always going to be warm enough to support intense tropical cyclones during the hurricane season and we're starting to see that very nicely show up now. Now, to look at what's going on right now, this is Tropical Depression 5, newly uh, initiated advisories at 11 o'clock to see this after, or this morning rather, <laughs> I cannot speak today. Kind of going a little fast because this is a little bit later in the afternoon. We had some uh, technical Wi-Fi difficulties earlier, but regardless, this is coming from tropicaltibbets.com. And again, you continue to notice this area. This is our spin right here, and you notice how yesterday we were taking a look at that off the uh, southeast coast there and a mesovortex basically begun to spun, uh, spin up across the area. This is our center of circulation. There's a little bit of drier and shear. You kind of notice that <clears throat> by some of the darker or some of the darker clouds out here, some of the more blackish areas and also some of these arc like structures. These are very indicative of that drier air and you're not really seeing a lot of deep, deep convection across the center. This is actually Bermuda uh, right there that's actually bermuda so there will be some minimal impacts to bermuda maybe some tropical storm conditions expected for portions of bermuda this is expected to become our fifth name storm uh, by this evening or within the next about 12 hours or so this is expected to become our fifth name storm this will generally pass off toward the, the north uh, and west of the or of bermuda and eventually kind of snake its way across and end up across the northern atlantic but for finally weakening now this could be a little bit stronger or weaker but again by hour 60 this is expected to weaken this is only shown through hour 48 because this is expected to become post-tropical after hour 48 by about 60 hours from now this is expected to be post-tropical and not really doing much but we do have to watch for what might be happening across this area 
and off the southeast coast there over the next several days. But again, no watches or warnings right now for Bermuda at all. And if we take a look here at the the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. Basically, as you get towards these reds and whites here, you're getting your higher cyclonic spin with height. You're not really getting this very big uh, congealed area, but nonetheless, that's our 850 signature. Pretty decently, it is still a little bit stretched out across here, but we had this little meso vortex that kind of developed dove south into the convection and really begun to undergo significant strength strengthening excuse me of the vortex overnight and it actually then acquire tropical characteristics during this this afternoon or this morning into this afternoon now and we've seen some people say that this isn't necessarily a, a tropical system but it is this has a very warm core low which is kind of positioned right there this is kind of your little semi structure of convection not really significant but you can kind of see where we have this little comma shape kind of area right there not a lot of uh, moisture up to the west of the system however this is expected to kind of fill in and become a little bit more stronger as we kind of go throughout time as this approaches bermuda but again no significant land impacts expected there and this is one thing interesting this is from the central university of wisconsin madison site here basically this is where our system is this is looking at the sea surface temperatures mapped onto our actual storm track again this is our little system right here that's uh, tropical depression five right there this is uh, bermuda which is located right there and you notice where our about 27 isotherm is it kind of dips in through here so we just went through the system kind of coming through this very warm pocket now it's sitting in about roughly about 26 degree isotherm which is the required amount for these tropical cyclones to really kind of take advantage of the the environment the upper ocean heat content for reference not a lot of ohc through here there is some this is the gulf stream that's running through here and again you're, you're not really getting into the Gulf Stream but you are tapping into that warmer environment and again this is expected to become a tropical storm within the next 12 hours or so as it generally moves off towards the north and east here over the next several days but again really this is not following that Gulf Stream pattern now there is a little bit of kind of upper ocean heat content out here towards kind of the northern latitudes this is after about hour this is about hour 36 and this will be entering a more favorable environment once once again, you notice those sea surface temperatures fall to a little hole here at about 25 Celsius and then jump back up here and it's about 26 Celsius. So this will kind of meander around some decent uh, environmental conditions over the next uh, couple of hours to the next day or so. But after the next day or so, this is expected to encounter unfavorable conditions as this will be passing through cooler waters and not really getting into a lot of the circulation at that time. And you notice there is some dry air around here. You notice this is kind of looking at the drier air in the atmosphere and that is certainly trying to get wrapped into a little bit of the vortex on the western side. So certainly not really looking for anything uh, exceptionally strong. However, again, we will kind of continue to monitor this. And again, you notice how we have this kind of structure where you're not getting a lot of convection on the western side and the southwestern side you're kind of getting it if you just zoom back in here you're kind of getting it there on the southeastern side of there so you're not really seeing a whole lot you notice some of these art clouds there's kind of uh, reminiscent of this drier more stable air in the atmosphere but this will can continue to kind of spin away through, throughout the next 24 to 36 hours uh, passing probably off toward the north and west of Bermuda but again if we have this convection here on the southeastern side this will likely be a problem for portions of Bermuda that could get impacted by some of the tropical storm force gusts and any more squally conditions that could be uh, impacting this area over the next 24 to 36 hours or so now Taking a look here at the larger scale Atlantic Basin again, we're going to keep this short today because it's 4th of July and really not a lot going on other than this system. But you do notice out here, we do have another system kind of meandering around the Gulf of Mexico right now. And some of this is going to try to uh, actually bundle into a more favorable environment as this, this will eventually kind of move inland once again and then traverse out across the Gulf Stream through here over the next uh, few days or so where the models are more... Uh, 
aggressive with development out here off the southeastern United States coast. This is all tripped across a larger kind of stalled frontal boundary through here. There's kind of a larger tail end front that's kind of dipped in through here. And what that's going to end up doing is, again, you always want to watch the tail end of fronts. And we're kind of seeing that. We, we saw that here with Tropical Depression 5 and this little system out here. Now, this is not expected to develop in the Gulf of Mexico at all, but this will eventually move uh, further out into the Gulf Stream and then eventually try to find a more favorable environment over there. And we can see that. This is the, the uh, 12Z GFS forecast here, valid as of 1 o'clock this afternoon. This is actually the vorticity associated with Tropical Depression 5 out here. And this is kind of our stretched out little front. You notice how this is kind of really stretched out and elongated in there. We have our little Tropical Depression in through there and you notice as we go out through the next several days or so the models really don't show anything but as we kind of go throughout time the models might be coming a little bit more the 12z uh, the 12z european forecast model uh, shows us a lot better here that the, the uh, european is a lot more aggressive than the, the gfs forecast model but again this continues to be persistent now how far inland does this actually go is going to be the real key because if this doesn't go that far inland and it kind of just drifts across the southeastern coast here and eventually make its way out here, this has more of an opportunity to go on to develop like the European model would show. But if this continues to kind of drift further to the north and it eventually only make its way out here across the mid-Atlantic and northeast, this isn't really going to have much chance to develop. And currently, the GFS is forecasting that by hour 162. This is still inland over the United States as we get this uh, bigger ridging out here that is kind of uh, prohibiting the system from really exiting as we get this is our little trough of low pressure through here our wave axis that's going to be pulling the system north well this big expansive ridge of high pressure is going to kind of be steering the storm uh, away and keeping it out from the waters now conversely here on the european forecast there is basically no trough there's a little bit of a trough axis through here and then our ridging which is kind of weaker and you notice how that that's a little bit weaker in the forecast model comparatively to the gfs which which has our big high pressure situated out here near Bermuda. But our European forecast model has our biggest high pressure ridge sitting out here. That would kind of continue to really just be dominant across here. We have this little uh, wave axis that's kind of positioned through here that would generally help to promote a system to ride more off towards and, and get a little bit more out to sea here and really then try to go on through the Gulf Stream. So both models are indicating something uh, over the next 120 to the next 140 hours or so, but where exactly this actually is by that time remains to be seen. Although, there, again, there could be more than one system, and the, the, again, the, the European then eventually begins to kind of nudge this ridging of high pressure further in. This trough axis kind of leaves, and there's not really anything that by such, this is actually just kind of sitting around here and finding itself in a more favorable Gulf Stream environment out here after the hour 140 time frame. So there is a lot to be seen over the next several days or so as what could be tropical storm or, or a, another tropical system, a tropical cyclone rather, might try to develop out here across the Gulf Stream over the next several days or so. But again, exactly what comes out of this little system right now that's situated right here off the Florida Panhandle there. Again, what comes of this system remains to be seen, although again we will kind of see throughout the next several days that this system is going to traverse inland but exactly how far uh, out to sea this actually gets and how far off the coast this gets how strong is this ridge of high pressure again we don't know those answers yet but we will find them out soon enough so again we do have a lot to watch here over the next several days or so, but again, nothing significant to land concern. The only land concern at this point is going to be from a soon-to-be tropical storm, Aguardo, that is going to be moving off towards the north and east here. But again, no significant land concerns to Bermuda, but there could be some squally conditions for parts of Bermuda over the next uh, day or so, but eventually this will move far enough away and be of no significant concern. So again, Tropical Depression 5 is our main concern for today for portions of Bermuda. We will be watching this other system as it tries to get its organization over the next several days potentially making it a rock to become a tropical uh, cyclone over the next several days or so but again 
And the deep tropics are shut down for now. Dry, stable air across this area all the way up to the Azores, so nothing significant for there. We do have some impressive tropical waves that are coming off of Africa, but no significant concern at this time. <clears throat> Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I'll be back with more for you tomorrow. I am Michael Romali. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Have a safe and happy July 4th, everybody. And I will see you guys back here tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone.